Hey everybody, Model Man Tom here. A week or two ago I was surfing over at the fiberopticstore.com. I'd like to stop in there and uh, see what Paul's been doing with the site every now and then. And I saw that he had this new product available. Solid Core Side Glow, Side Firing Fiber Optics. Put the light in one end and it shoots out the sides and the far end. I just had to see this stuff in action. So Paul sent me these few bags here. It comes in 2, 3, and 5 millimeter. When I saw those numbers, I was kind of surprised because regular fiber optic at 2 and 3 millimeter is very difficult to bend. However, this stuff, you can get a fairly good uh, angles out of it overall. This is the 5 millimeter here. The 2 and the 3 millimeter tend to splay out all over the place when I take them out of the bag, so I'll probably just be using the 5 millimeter. I've cut uh, 15, 6, and 3 inch samples so you can see how the light flows at each end and I'll also plug the light into the uh, rain, remaining 8 feet that's here. I've got a single white LED up here. It's normal brightness. This stuff would definitely do well with ultra bright and super bright LEDs for just better light transmission overall. But showing you what you can get out of it with a baseline normal LED I think is going to be a good example. Also over here is a small bit of a mirror and I'll show you what that's for when we get to it. Out of these pieces here I've cut a few pieces of small aluminum tubing to uh, help seat the LED over the fiber optics real quick. I'll try heat shrinking this stuff. I think it's possible but uh... so let's get a closer look at all this stuff. I've got much less light going on in the room right now so the LED is definitely looking brighter and you can see that's definitely a really good brightness going on but it's not an ultra bright LED is all that I'm saying about that taking a closer look at some of this stuff this again is the five millimeter piece and this stuff just loves exacto blades regular fiber optics Exactos are very difficult because there's glass in there. This stuff does not seem to have glass going on though. It seems to be just a pure plastic. It's tough to tell if it's reflections or not, but in a few cases you can kind of see some scratches or the stuff doesn't have bubbles in it at all. But you can see, it's tough to say what they are, slight deformations around the uh, outsides and I don't know that I can really get that on this camera at all. Well, let's put a light on this. This is when it's most visible. Yeah, so you can definitely see the far side of it at all but that is a really nice ghostly color going on. This is some really cool stuff. Let's take a look at this in a wider angle. Check out the amount of, that's almost the full amount of light that comes out of the uh, far end. So you get the normal use of fiber optics and all this light pouring out of the sides. I've looked around for a long time and the only product I've found similar is some acrylic sheet that if you put light on the top surface, the light then comes out the sides. But that stuff comes in neon predetermined colors and uh, obviously it's not fiber optic and you can't just uh, bend it into whatever shape you need. So Paul at the fiber optic store suggested that uh, if you put an LED at both ends you get twice the brightness essentially but you can see that there's a bit of a gradient going on. It's very bright at this end where the LED is of course then it kinda smooths out towards the end and then there's let me get this even tighter down there against the LED. Now you can really see the difference. Very bright and pure at this end. Over here you can start to uh, lose some visibility but there's light bouncing back from the end cut itself. And what I've discovered is that if you put something over the end of it, let's take uh, this piece of black plastic, this will essentially absorb any stray light, the black. It won't reflect it back inside. And I don't know if you can see uh, any kind of lighting difference as I pull it away. Let's take a look at it just against my finger here which is brighter though. 
there's a very slight extra bit of light getting kicked back in. And then here's where we'll use the mirror, we'll use the back side of it, the white. You can definitely see a lot of bounce light coming back in on the right side. And that's evening the light out much, much more. If we use the mirror side of it, there's a major distinct amount of light getting kicked back that the camera is definitely pulling up. And this is essentially the same as using a second LED, though a second LED may give you slightly better results. I was trying to for a little while, and basically all it did is duplicate this end at that end so there was still a bit of a gradient in the middle over any given length. And that's really the most amazing thing about this stuff is that whether it's three inches or eight feet, this light really travels throughout, and we'll take a look at that now. So let's just step up to the 15 inch. So you can see that it definitely has some dimming going on by the far end. But just as much light still pours out the bottom of it as ever before. In person the dimming is not as noticeable as it appears to be on camera here. This definitely fades down around here but it's also changing color to some degree. At this end it's much more of a pure white and then over here it's getting into a golden color and then at the far end again it's getting back to pure white. Let's put the mirror back on this so you can see how much of a difference that is making right there alone. And This is essentially the same effect that two LEDs on the same strand has so I think over longer lengths this is not as effective. However, once it gets down to a certain tone it essentially sits there and I think if you put an ultra bright LED into this you're really going to get some fantastic results. Let's plug this into the 8 foot real quick looped up. So you can see even over 8 feet this is still putting off a fair amount of medium light throughout the middle then at the far end, it's still just as bright. I've got the mirror against there now. So you can still get a lit effect out of this over any basic distance, really. And I would say that as you get towards the middle range, such as is in here right now, there are a lot of different possibilities for this kind of stuff. A lot of models can use this. I think over the longer length, it's not as effective for us as modelers, but the short lengths, the 3 to 6 inch, I think if you took several strands of the 2 millimeter here, those would look great in the uh, Polar Lights 11000 Starship series from Star Trek as warp engine effects, because this stuff is definitely the right size for that. Let's take a look at the 3 millimeter here. there is a huge amount of light coming off the end of this. Now if there was a way to get a hundred percent of this coming out the sides then that would really be phenomenal. I think a lot of good uses for this apart from the warp engines for uh, a Star Trek ship are if you have a lot of little lights next to each other rather than threading each one with fiber optics you can just put this right behind there and pretty much light them all up uniformly. If you've got an HO scale train house or something like that that you want to put a lot of light in, this could work as well. I'm thinking this will be good to use on the Jupiter 2 in a few spots. Millennium Falcon is a good one. Basically there's not going to be too many of these that uh, you can't do a really good job with. And here is the 2 millimeter lit up and with the mirror on the end. So even with the room light on, this stuff has some really great brightness qualities to it. You can distinctly tell that that is lit. That's 150 watts of light. There's 300 watts. 
compared to that, it's definitely lit, and it's certainly giving off light, even in this lighting environment now. With the full lights on, uh, it's definitely tough to tell at this point, but if this was a red or a green, you would certainly see it. One thing you're probably thinking is, how does this compare to something like EL wire? Well, you know what? I happen to have some. Let's take a look. Alright, so it's been a while since I took this one out. I think I have a video for this specifically somewhere called HodgePodge Lighting. Basically, it's the CCFL tubes you see there, the EL blue wire running around the sides, the blue corner at the center there is uh, EL sheet, the two blue stripes here are EL ribbon. Uh, there's a red LED behind that door light at the top and on the sides there. There's a couple of LEDs right in here and this is an LED as well as that. We've even got LEDs up in the ceiling but the effect is very muted. You can't tell anything is lit. I took this out to, rather than pulling out a bunch of individual EL wires and trying to wire all that up, since I had this all pre-done already, I figured I'd show you the side firing fiber optics in comparison. So obviously the CCFLs are going to hold their own across the entire length because those are glass tubes filled with uh, gas that's electrified. So they're going to have a uniform consistency across the board. The EL wire is definitely weaker looking in person than it is here. You can definitely see it working in this area for example but in person it's not quite as distinct at all and the side firing fiber optic pretty much holds its own in terms of intensity and overall effect I think let me put a longer length in there and we'll see how that does so here we've got 15 inches of the 3 millimeter so definitely over the shorter length it holds its own, but here in person it's tough to tell if that center uh, angle there is lit from outside or inside. And of course there's always the benefit that you're actually transmitting light to the far end of the tube as well, which is not to be forgotten. No other product here does that. And as you can see, all these together, that each one is going to have its own strength and its own weakness the buzz coming off of all these devices, the EL inverters, is fairly loud and significant. The colors are certainly different in person than they are uh, on camera. Let's try a different white balance. Not too much of a difference, though the blues are certainly toned down. Yeah, I think this is much more accurate to what they look like in person, especially on the left side there. This white has turned somewhat yellow, but that's also the fact that there's so much red going on all over the place. And that is pretty much a look at side firing fiber optics. But before I get too much further, I just want to make a quick note. This is the CCFL tube taken apart. This is a broken one from a while ago. So we got the outer plastic casing which protects this, the glass tube, and this is really fragile glass. And you note at the end there, there's a cap with a wire coming out of it, and basically what that does is electrify all the uh, gas that's inside this glass tube. And if you happen to touch this wire here while it's active, there's 900 to 1200 volts going through this. I don't know how many amps, but I could seriously actually kill you if the circumstances are just bad and uh, it's not a risk you should go taking. That is one major dangerous thing about CCFL tubes. Of course, you shouldn't take them out of the tubes, but if you do, you could really be screwing with uh, your life to a large degree. It hurts like hell touching one of those. I've done it, I know. Uh, that and I always seem to be burning out the inverters on these things too so CCFL and I have not done too well here and there it's worked really well but for the most part not too good at all and it's expensive at six to fifteen dollars per one foot tube 
what else is there to say? Side firing fiber optics is an awesomely powerful tool that should be in the arsenal of every hobbyist just as much as any EL products that's out there, LED products or anything. This is oh, it can be used for a lot of things and there's a few things that it will be used for very very well I think. Stop over at the fiber optic store and have a look around. There's a ton of fiber optic stuff there that uh, you just won't find anywhere else and the prices are always great. Paul is a great guy to deal with. Stop on by and check it out. Thanks for watching. See ya.